Hey, I'm Reinhard Kate, and welcome to episode 27 of The Ripple Drop. Today we've got Monica Long on, who's gonna talk all things NFTs, and specifically XLS20, the protocol designed for NFTs on the XRP ledger. When a lot of people think of NFTs, I think they refer to a lot of collector's items like apes or punks, things like that. What other capabilities do NFTs have? I think at their core, what's exciting about NFTs is the concept of owning these digital objects. So be it art, like a PFP project, like apes or punks or, or other forms of art, or if it's something like real estate or even carbon credits, the, the applications of NFTs can extend to, to lots of different industries. But the, the core idea is about ownership. And I think that matters for, for two reasons. One is uh, bringing the seller and buyer relationship closer together. So taking art as the example, today there's a lot of intermediaries in, in the mix between the creator and the fan. So those are the rent takers and friction makers in the whole process. And what's exciting about NFTs is there's now a greater opportunity for the creator or the artist to monetize their work and, and build t a tighter relationship with their fan base and, and that community. And we've definitely seen that with projects like Apes and Punks. The second reason that um, putting these assets on the blockchain matters is transparency. Blockchains have the inherent attribute of, you know, they're global public open ledgers. And so there's this uh, then global record and single source of truth around ownership of that asset. And so this matters for things like art, but also titles, if you think of real estate um, or carbon credits, so that you can track the ownership of those assets as well as other data around it. What's Ripple's vision for NFTs and how can NFTs be used as solutions for real world problems? There's two prongs to our vision. So firstly, specifically regarding the XRP ledger, um, XRP ledger was the first to enable the tokenization of any form of value onto the ledger. And it also introduced to the world the concept of a decentralized exchange. So you, can, you could, all the way back to 2012, tokenize anything of value onto the ledger and then have this robust marketplace within the decentralized exchange to trade it and move it around the world. Kind of calling back to its origins, XRP Ledger has always been great at the creation of tokens and the exchange of tokens uh, to, to be very efficient at large scale. So we think there's a real opportunity to support developers and creators building NFT projects in a way that's really efficient. So as one specific aspect of efficiency um, to drill down on, you know, we all read about the horrific and painful high gas fees on other chains. That's value that's taken away from the creator and it kind of is absorbed into the chain. Um, in the case of XRP Ledger, the, the transaction fees or gas fees are about half a penny. So we think that's a really powerful value proposition to anyone building a, an NFT project. The second prong to it is that we, you know, today there's a lot of different really interesting use cases in the realm of arts and media and entertainment, but looking into the future, we see that NFTs will expand to have lots of enterprise applications and even in financial services. So we think these core NFT capabilities are going to be important to, for example, RippleNet customers in the future. So Ripple, the company, has put forward XLS20, a new protocol for NFTs on the XRP ledger. As only one member of a greater community of developers, they can't implement that on the XRP ledger by themselves. So what needs to happen for XLS20 to go live? Yes, so XLS20, a bit about that, a little bit of history. So since 2012, there was this ability to tokenize anything of value onto the ledger. Once we had this insight uh, that you know, developers and creators of NFT projects could really benefit from the just inherent attributes of XRP Ledger. We sought to improve the, uh, or contribute a, uh, something that would improve the ability to create NFTs on XRP Ledger. We proposed a new amendment to XRP Ledger called XLS20, and we built this new standard. And what it does is it makes uh, the, the creation of NFTs on XRP Ledger uh, very compact and efficient, so it doesn't 
uh, Im impact ledger performance um, and create a lot of congestion at scale. And it also makes the experience for the developer creating that NFT really easy. So uniquely, it doesn't implement smart contracts, which is typically how you create NFTs on other chains. What that does or what it means is that it, it kind of reduces the additional security risks that smart contracts introduce, um, as well as some of the complexity and room for error. Things like minting, trading, auctioning, burn, uh, uh, burning, as well as even royalties are features within this XLS20 standard. Um, so it, it will make that developer experience of creation that much easier. You mentioned, you know, what will it take for this standard to be implemented? Um, we developed it and put it up for amendment voting. The way that XRPL uh, works is uh, UNL validators have to, 80% of them have to vote yes on a proposed amendment over the course of two weeks for it to be implemented. So that process is in the mix right now. So sustainability has been really important for Ripple, the company. Can you talk to me about Exchange and other projects that are using NFTs to focus on this? Sustainability has, has definitely been a kind of key um, impact platform for Ripple over a long period of time. We, as a company, we committed to being uh, carbon neutral by 2030. We very recently announced that we would put $100 million toward uh, carbon market investments, meaning as a company, we're gonna invest in the R&D behind new technologies for carbon removal. We ourselves will, will be committed to buying high quality carbon credits. Translating that commitment over to blockchain and XRP Ledger, uh, we really believe that there's a powerful product market fit for carbon credit markets on blockchain. These markets suffer a, a lot of the kind of same problems that, frankly, we've seen in the world of payments uh, work on RippleNet, that being a high degree of fragmentation of these different carbon credit marketplaces, meaning that there's poor price discovery across the different markets, as well as just a lot of inefficiency, potential double spend where carbon credits are used more than once or sold more than once. These are problems that blockchains are really good at solving by creating that kind of global fabric, that tr open transparency globally across the different marketplaces. So we're already seeing companies take this use case and, and, and bring it to XRP Ledger. One partner being Exchange. Um, they are backed by the UN actually um, toward achieving the UN sustainability goals. And they're already in the process of building a carbon credit marketplace on XRP Ledger. Um, Carbon Land Trust is another project that um, we've provided a grant to for, uh, through the XRPL grants program. In the future, if XLS20 is adopted by the XRP Ledger, what benefits will it bring to the XRP Ledger community as a whole, but to NFT creators as well? It comes down to the efficiency and the scalability of XRP Ledger. When you're a creator or developer, you don't want to have to think about your technology stack. Like you don't want to have to worry that your the blockchain that you built on is going to break or that you're going to get slammed or your users are going to get slammed with crazy high fees. So it's about the experience being on their side and, and really making it work for them. For Ripple and like our perspective on it is just that, I mean, we've always believed that the power of XRP Ledger is in tokenization, liquidity, settlement. It's, it's so good at doing these things across a broad set of use cases on a global scale. And that is what builds us toward the internet of value. So this is a vision that, um, that we've kind of carried through since our founders articulated it in 2012. But it really is about applying blockchain and crypto to different use cases, be it payments or carbon credits or real estate or art, and democratizing uh, access to those different use cases so that there's more participants, there's those markets are more competitive and efficient, there's more empowerment toward the end users or the creators, making the uh, world of value creation and movement just as efficient as information exchange.